This is Island Road, the only connection between the mainland and Ile de Jean Charles. Rising waters are slowly destroying the road day after day, eroding the surface. The island is in fact a small ridge of land now below sea level. It's surrounded by levees that have failed to protect the area as hurricanes grow stronger and the protective marshes disappear. I can tell you about all them hurricanes from Hilda, Betsy, Audrey, Camille, and Katrine, Rita, Gustav. I think it's Camille. My house drift about 300 feet away. And for Andrew, my house went in the middle of the road right there. Here, the Biloxi Chichimacha, a Native American tribe, have lived for centuries. But their chief is reluctantly conceding that the moment has come to make a change. Well, the, the time has come upon us to where the inevitable is, is here. But right now, in the last uh, seven years, we lost 70% of our people here. So, I mean, so we don't know how much longer this is going to be here. There is one levy plan to salvage some of the communities along the southern coast, but it may come at the expense of others, like Chief Naquin's people. We, we want to move as a, as a community because of our heritage, the history we have here on, on, on the island, and to try to keep the culture together also would encourage people to get away from, uh, from the dangers of a hurricane and move, move, move uh, into a higher grounds for, uh, for safety. He has asked the government for aid to relocate, but some on the island are resisting his plan. They can't buy no place for me, for me to move. That's, I, that's my word. They can't find, they can't bring me nowhere that I want to go to leave this island. I don't want to leave this island. I catch me some fish, crab, shrimp, and it's a life over here. Yeah, that's why I go, I go fish right there. But the majority say they are ready to face facts after years of rebuilding and recovering from the onslaught of nature. You can't plant anything here. Uh, you can't grow any animals here. The parents have to bring their children to school. Uh, if we want groceries and the water's on the road, we got to either do without or try to f uh, watch the water go down and then hurry up and then come back. <laughs> I know they love their land. I love my land, but you gotta, sometimes you got to put your family first and move forward. What's left is mostly memories among the ruins. And all of this was beautiful. They had trees and they had uh, um, land out there where you could walk. Many, many years ago, it was a grocery store for the island. And this, this building, which is, well, not much left of it now. I love them to death. I'd do anything for them. But it's time for them to move. They need to move to higher ground. And it's going to feel good again to be safe. It's going to be good again to be um, away from uh, worry. It took the Mississippi River 7,000 years to build the coast of Louisiana. It took man less than a century to wash away a third of it. To understand how we got to this point, you have to go back 80 years to the time of Huey P. Long, who was a visionary state governor. He helped create much of what we see today. The streets, the levees built to protect the city, the bridges and the canals all helped modernize the state of Louisiana. It hauled it out of poverty. But there was a flaw in the plan. Without the sediment brought down by the Mississippi River, the land started to subside. In the 1930s, Long, who had consolidated enormous political power, began unprecedented public works aimed at lifting residents out of poverty and bringing modern industry to the state. There were new roads, bridges, there were docks for ships, and with all of this, along came the oil industry. Rigs began sprouting up along the bayou and canals were dredged across the fields to facilitate drilling barges and supply boats. We unleashed forces that we did not quite understand and, and it's had uh, very bad uh, outcomes. Roy Docker is a professor at Louisiana State University. A few years ago, he started using GPS technology to study how the Earth's surface shifts. 
Docker's research revealed that data that everybody had been relying on for decades had been exaggerated. Here we can actually see today 12 satellites. The reality is that the land is actually lower than records show, which means the threat is far greater than people think. Initially, there was a number of people who denied it. They didn't want to hear it. In fact, they actively worked against even the publication of this work. But over time, the reality is, is sinking in because now people are beginning to see this effect wherever they go. Of course, it's not only the wetlands that are in trouble. We're on the east side of New Orleans in a place called Lake Forest. It is a quiet enough community, but it's what lies beneath that's the problem. In this neighborhood, just on the edge of New Orleans, you can see subsidence in action, foundations opened up by the sinking ground. And you can't park your car in your garage because the driveways are more than a foot below the entrance. Um, a lot of people don't want to hear the truth because the truth is not attractive. On the other hand, more and more people every day are are recognizing that, uh, okay, this is what, this is what the, the problem is. The problem is nobody can agree on a solution. Coastal restoration efforts have been underway for two decades, but for every square kilometer of land that the government has either saved or created, five square kilometers have been lost to the Gulf. These internal ponds become bigger and bigger and bigger. Kerry Sampe is a marine biologist and director of the Terribon National Estuary Program. We couldn't build land where there wasn't a land before, but we can build land where there was land before. We can build a ridge where there was land before. Because um, you have the, the foundation to support that land. Sampe and others reject the idea that more levees will save either land or towns. Instead, he and others support a two-pronged plan to pump in massive amounts of new sediment and allow the Mississippi River to restore the rest. It is a plan similar to what has been used to create the artificial islands off the city of Dubai in the Middle East. The river is the key. It's the, the only way to get the, the, the most efficient way of holding on to what's still left. And it will take a lot of money. Uh, there's no question that Louisiana cannot afford this alone. Uh, there's no question that, you know, that this is not a Louisiana problem alone. This is a national problem and will require a national commitment. Down the bayou, people long remember the pain of government promises made and broken. It was in the flood-ravaged waters of the Mississippi in 1927 that the words, we're from the government and we're here to help, were first uttered. We haven't been neglected, we've been forgotten. We've basically been ignored by the federal government. Meanwhile, virtually all the practices that exacerbated land loss were allowed to continue, and in some cases, even encouraged. They're always taking all out of the ground, but you're never putting anything back in. Everything collapses. There goes your land because it has to fill in what you sucked out. The, the world was made by Mother Nature, God. It's up to us to keep it up and give back instead of keep taking. You can only take from the environment so long without putting back. I, I, I don't want to be critical of my federal government, but they really did do a whole bunch here. Uh, Brent Constrancich is a harbor policeman. He took us to a place where many believe the only hope to save southern Louisiana lies. Port Fouchon is a cluster of sport fishing camps in a gated community surrounded by huge docks. It is a city of ships in the marshes with supply vessels for the 500 or more oil rigs out in the Gulf of Mexico. A third of America's oil and natural gas come through here, accounting for half of the nation's refinery output. But despite all of this industrial capacity, just a small slice makes it into the coffers of the state. Out of the $7 billion in revenue, Louisiana receives less than 1%. And, and, and people just don't understand the importance and, and the benefits to, that South Louisiana provides the rest of the country. But the price of this fuel, 
sacrifice for seafood. His ability to get his grain to market is all dependent upon South Louisiana functioning properly. And that understanding is not there. There is a congressional plan to reroute funds to states like Louisiana, but not until 2017. Many observers say that will simply be too late. When I was a little boy, my grandfather used to say, uh, this was the bank. If you needed money, you went to the bank, caught it, sold it, and got your money. But it's not like that anymore. Government regulation, saltwater intrusion, habitat destruction, you know, and, and these guys here, they're all dying, they're getting old, and there's no one wanting to take their place. My generation or the next generation, may very well be the last of this culture. Is this place a tipping point in the balance between man and his environment? And is this river delta fated to be a clarion call for how humans and nature must strike a better balance so that both can survive? They robbed the bank. They robbed the bank, that's a good way of putting it, yeah. They've robbed the bank.